Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's so nice to see your smiling faces back here again this week. I've missed talking to you. Hopefully you've missed hearing from me. This week I have a fun little episode for you. Uh, today I'm going to tell you all about one of my most favorite online websites for writing code. You might already have heard of it. You might already have used it. But today, if you haven't, we're going to go deep on my favorite website, Code Sandbox. Code Sandbox is a website that allows you to pretty much make an entire web application in your browser. So if you want to have kind of like a Chromebook or a more mobile friendly laptop that doesn't have a full operating system, having the ability to run VS Code or Sublime or Atom or IntelliJ, all those IDEs, you can actually have the entire IDE experience right in the browser within Code Sandbox itself. What is most cool, a little bit of trivia for you here, what is most cool for me about Code Sandbox is that it was actually started by a college student and he has since turned it into a business. Uh, recently they announced funding. Uh, let me make sure I get this right because I don't want to say the wrong number, but they recently got funding from investors to the tune of $2.4 million for a seed round. And that is very impressive for a seed round. Usually you get a couple hundred thousand, but a lot of money being put into Code Sandbox, which is great for me and everybody who likes to use it because then we can actually have better features put into Code Sandbox and have it be built out. That's enough of the preamble. Uh, we're actually gonna get a little tour of Code Sandbox together and kind of show you why I love it what you can do with it, and maybe you might use it for your next project. So uh, let's dive in. Okay, and here we have the homepage for Code Sandbox, the online code editor for the web, the React. Oh, it keeps changing. Look at that fancy little homepage. Uh, this is the homepage if you're logged out, so you can actually kind of see the marketing reasons why you might want to use Code Sandbox to play around with some things. Uh, all this nice little marketing things, very nice little new website. Um, but aside from just staring at the marketing pages, I'm gonna actually just jump into it to begin with. Uh, this is my logged in dashboard with Code Sandbox where actually I can see all of the sandboxes that I've built in the past. And rather than me telling you about what they are, we're actually just gonna start building one together just to kind of get a little feel for it. So here you have a create sandbox button and I create React sandbox because a lot of people use Code Sandbox that write React applications. Uh, here you can actually see the templates that you can use. What's really cool about this is actually you can load up these templates uh, without actually having to do anything on your local computer. So if I was curious about what a Gatsby website looked like, I could actually click here and Code Sandbox will spin up an instance of that for me. Uh, let me actually increase the size a little bit so we actually can maybe see things a little bit more clearly for you. And uh, here it's spinning things up and this is kind of the, uh, this is, running a Gatsby website already in Code Sandbox. That was in under two seconds. If I wanted to do this locally, I would have had to git clone a starter template, then do npm install. npm install is pretty much half the battle because that takes all the time anyways. Uh, but even here, I can just browse around and see what it looks like to make a Gatsby website. Index, index two, see what these things do. And if I wanted to actually start using this, I can go into header. Uh, here we have the site title. Uh, well, where's the index page? Here's the index page saying hi people. I actually can just start typing and it should just let me start working. So I can say hello to YouTube, save that. And if you see in the top right, it actually just forked this template into my own account that I can then have full control over and play around with. That's initializing the container, installing packages, um, at least it's doing it on their server, not on my computer, so it's less things I have to worry about. And before I know it, and before I can vamp for more time, it should be done, and I should be in the thick of it with a Gatsby application. And there it is, hello to YouTube. So no time at all. Let's go back to the uh, initial page and actually give you a tour of what a sandbox looks like. So for now, I'm gonna make a React sandbox, because that's kind of the easiest way to start off with. And here you kind of see three panes on the initial Code Sandbox page. You have the left side, which has all of your 
file system information that you normally have on your IDE side panel. You have the information about the template that's based off of, the name of it, uh, how many people have, uh, I believe, I guess, looked at it or used it, and the dependencies that are there. If I want to add another dependency, like, uh, what's the dependency? You can simply add it here. You can click into here, see things that you want to add, and just kind of debugs it, adds it for you. Uh, this is still loading. My laptop is slowly melting. In here is the code editor, which is obviously the place that you'd spend the most time in. If you want to have more focus here, you can actually contract this left side, clicking on these buttons. And what's really cool to me about Code Sandbox, one of the most cool things about Code Sandbox is it actually has the VS Code editor built into the browser. All of VS Code it's accessible from within Code Sandbox for you to use. So for example, if I wanted to just open a file, like for example, if I wanted to open up this style.css file, I can do command P, type in styles, who can navigate to there to be able to change things. So if I wanted to change uh, color to pink, my favorite colors and hit save, again, it's forking it, opening it up, there it's pink, done in real time. Uh, we don't need that, don't need this. Let's go back to um, my file list and look at index.js. And here we can actually just start editing things if we want to. Uh, H3, uh, the more the merrier. And also you can see here, because it's based in VS Code, you're getting this automatic typing for you right away. Um, what I also love to do here is being able to actually pop out the test browser into a new window, which you actually could send to a friend if you wanted to because you have a new instance entirely. Click there, send it to a friend and start working on Code Sandbox together. Um, Code Sandbox also supports tests, which I don't even know if there's a test in here for me to actually run. Doesn't look like it, but that's fine. And here you have the ability to sync your Code Sandboxes with a GitHub repo. So you can actually have Code Sandbox either import a GitHub repo into Code Sandbox, you'd actually edit in their editor, or and also push back those changes to GitHub to actually have your entire developer experience inside the browser. You can deploy it with Netlify or with Zite. Um, configuration files, you actually want to configure how Prayer should use. There's a nice little way that tells you how you want to have Prayer format things. And this is one of the coolest things, is you can actually uh, go live. Yes, so you can actually do live code sharing with somebody else. So if I were to copy this, so I'm actually move this to the side, make a new window over to the side here. Uh, this is one of the things, oh, I need to sign in to join this session. I don't have another session to join. All right, I won't share this right now, but suffice it to say, you can actually share a session with somebody, actually have people click around in real time uh, with your application. So if you're working on some project with a friend and you want to collaborate on it, you can actually do that within Code Sandbox pretty easily. Now you can actually do that with VS Code nowadays too. It's built into VS Code, but uh, less to configure by just going to a website. What I find actually most exciting about Code Sandbox in some ways is that you can actually very easily play with technologies that you might not yourself want to do uh, on your computer. So if you were interested in playing around with Vue for chance, just wanted to poke around things, you can quickly load up the Vue uh, template and start poking around to see what a Vue thing looks like. And what's great is because it has a template, you have something to start off with. That, in my opinion, is always one of the easiest ways to learn something is just by looking at existing examples. Um, here, exporting things. If I were to change this, I don't know if that would change anything. Uh, H1 message, hello view in view sandbox, hello world. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know view. Might be a thing that I need to learn one day. What's also cool is you can actually go to the explore tab and kind of see what other people are doing with applications inside of uh, Code Sandbox. This is a React Spring Flick animation. That's very cool in the browser. I do not know how to tell fortune, so I will not even try. Uh, what's the next thing that they have on display here? Tailwind workflow animation uh, showing the power of Tailwind. Okay. And the next one is Mario Kart and CSS. That is uh, that is ridiculous. How do you do that? A D. Uh, can I? How do I click there? I want to. I want to see how they did this. This is wild. Uh, this is the navigation to. Navigate between the two modes. This is just the browser mode. If I wanted to have the code, I could go here to see that. 
I just want to see the code, I can click all the way here. Uh, let's open the side panel as well. That is, ins that is just bonkers that someone was able to do this. That is just a fun thing to play with. Um, yeah, you can see all these things people are working on with Code Sandbox. And it's also just a great way to just pretty much explore and just try things out that you would otherwise not play with yourself. So that's Code Sandbox. It's one of the websites that I love just spinning up real quick on my browser, being able to like poke around with some technologies that I'm not really familiar with to kind of get a feel for them without having to be so invested on it actually taking up hard drive space on my computer. There's that weird uncanny valley that uh, by actually NPM installing something locally, there's a much bigger investment in my attachment to actually doing something with that. Whereas if I have it all in the browser, it's very easy just kind of to throw out and let the cloud service, the Code Sandbox service, just deal with all that for me. I don't have to worry about anything at all. What's also great about Code Sandbox is if you do want to actually pull that in locally and actually take it into your own environment, you've like made something that you're actually happy with, then you can get clone it because they have a, you can get repo that you can actually pull from. Um, it's also great if you have some problem that you're working on that you're trying to figure out how to like fix, you can actually make a Code Sandbox version of that problem, send it to a coworker and or a friend, and they can actually play in real time and try to figure out what your issue might be. So if you haven't played the Code Sandbox, definitely encourage you to try it out. It's really fun, really quick, really easy to get going with. Uh, have you used Code Sandbox in the past? Because I'd be curious to know. What other favorites do you have? I know there's JS Fiddle, there's CodePen, which is a big favorite. Most people the CSS crowd, I feel like. Uh, Code Sandbox kind of is more of the React crowd, more of the uh, JS Frameworks type of crowd, but CodePen is a big CSS um, animations type people there. Um, I know there's also Repl.it is another one that's a really good one for playing around with uh, code in a cloud environment. Um, be curious to hear what your favorites are and why. Why do you like those more than anything else? And do you think there's value in having these things be in a browser environment? If you're not already a subscriber, please do become a subscriber down below. I make these videos every week for you to enjoy and learn from. And with that, I will talk to you again next week. Bye-bye.